viewer. My name is Al Erastas Maina Gujiri, production manager Road Kenya. Road Kenya stands for Resources Oriented Development Initiatives Kenya and its headquarters are based in Ruiru. Road Kenya works with uh, various groups of people. We, we train prisoners on various um, techniques. We teach them on agriculture, value addition, and appropriate technology. We also work with the schools. And we, we teach on sustainable agriculture. So today's topic will be on uh, soil fertility because soil fertility is the basis of our food production and without proper soil management we cannot be food secure. So I'm going to touch on uh, the various methods of how we enrich our soils. Firstly, I would like to talk on why soil fertility is of crucial importance, uh, bearing in, in mind that if you don't have enough nutrients in the soil, you cannot be able to produce uh, good food. Therefore, there are uh, various factors that contribute to uh, infertility of the soil and one is continued monocropping that's growing of one crop after a an year and next year you just plant the same same crop and this leads to exclusion of nutrients in the soil and this is uh, brought about by the land scarcity. Normally nowadays we don't have enough land where you can leave your land furrow for some time so that the, the soil regains its fertility. So because of continued uh, uh, use of the same piece of land, we, this leads to exhaustion of of soil nutrients and this brings about various problems in food production. One, when the soils cannot support healthy crops, the crops tend to 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 be a, uh, the <clears throat> the crops are becomes vulnerable to to diseases and pests. Just like the, in the human nutrition, if you are healthy, you are able to, to resist diseases. So likewise in uh, food production, when soils are not fertile enough, the, the plants become weak, they, they don't uh, grow faster, and they read to, uh, they, they get stress because mostly when the soils are fertile, soils that are having a lot of organic matter, uh, water holding capacity of that particular soil is improved. And uh, as I was saying that, because of land size, the farmers are forced to cultivate uh, the same piece of land year in year out and that leads to exhaustion of soil nutrients the other thing is about uh, there's no enough biomass for making compost farmers don't get enough materials to make compost piles so that they can use the compost pile the compost in their farms. So lack of enough organic matter uh, leads to poor soils. And also as 
as you know, when the land is left uh, idle for some time, there are, there are weeds that grow, and when uh, the farmers come and cultivate, they incorporate those, those materials back to the soil and they improve the soil structure. So, because of continued land size, land use, uh, and planting of one crop, our soils are exposed to soil erosion. Because if you are growing maize, for instance, and you don't have a cover crop that will protect your soil, this soil is, is prone to erosion. And with that continued growing of that particular crop, like maize, as I have said, that particular soil will be exhausted because one mostly the the maize draws the same but uh, the, the the maize 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 draws from the soil the same nutrients year in year out and for instance if if you are growing maize with uh, another crop like uh, a legume that would help in in fixing the nitrogen into the soil and because uh, the modern farmer is advised by by our extension officers that if you want to have good crop you must have single stud and by single stud I mean planting of one crop at a particular time and if this is done for for many many years that particular soil will have problems because the same nutrients will be drawn from the soil and not much of it is returned back to the soil. But if we had um, rotational cropping where you plant different crops and these different crops, different plants take different nutrients from the soil and also different uh, crops have a different root system and that by that i mean that there are some roots that are deep rooted and therefore they take nutrients deep into the soil and some some crops are shallow rooted and therefore take the nutrients that are on the surface of the soil therefore because of land scarcity so many things do happen into our soils. One, there is that continued production and when you take uh, the harvest from the farm, you take your, your, your produce to the market, not much of it is returned back to the soil. Like in the case of maize, if you cut the maize stovers, so some of our farmers might decide to burn uh, the, the leftovers and by this you destroy the organic matter. The others feed the, the misstovers to the animals. All others might sell the misstovers to, to livestock farmers because this particular farmer is looking for for what he can get a shilling from. Therefore, you see that what was produced from the farm is not proud back to the soil, to the farm, and it is taken elsewhere. And this leads to nutrients uh, drain, drainage. So, if you continue for several years doing the same, same thing, our soils become very, very, infertile and as a, as a result of this we find that we are food insecure and like currently <clears throat> we have heard that uh, the prices of flour uh, is very high it's just because farmers are not able to grow enough maize to feed the, the, the population that we have and therefore we are relying on imported maize. So 
the other thing is uh, the cutting of um, of deforestation the for deforestation because people want to to use that particular land for for cropping a lot of trees are cut and therefore not much of the leaves is taken back to the to the soils so that the soil can be able to to have humus so there are various methods that we use so that we can uh, be able to grow crops and one is through composting there are two types of composts there's one called uh, vegetative composting whereby you go and uh, cut uh, green leaves and you go and find dry leaves or grass and then you pile and then you make a compost pile the other one is through using beddings from the the animal sheds and this one we call it boma compost there is also another method of um, called uh, vermiculture vermiculture is vermin using earthworms because of lack of a lot of biomass to make the compost piles one can use the the little vegetation that one can get from his farm and feed the worms and then the worms can give this particular person two products one called vermi liquid and the other one uh, vermi compost there is also another method of uh, soil enrichment and this one is called uh, liquid manures and plant teas and this one's one is you use a farmyard manure you put it in a drum and the other one is you you find uh, green leaves you chop them and you put them to stand in a in a drum and then you can use the water right alone as a for your fertilizer and also there is another way uh, soil fertility can be enhanced through keeping of small livestock or like chicken and rabbits also we get a uh, rabbit urine from our rabbits and we use it as a fodder feed and lastly i would like to advise farmers that apart from because the land is the limiting factor in all what I have talked about it's very important to practice agroforestry agroforestry is the growing of trees and there are those species of trees that are recommended for agroforestry and uh, they are like rukina uh, sesbania coriandra and also these trees can be fed to our animals because of the land size you can get uh, fuel wood from the agroforestry trees because they grow very fast and also you can get fodder from the same same trees so it is very important to combine a uh, growing of crops and keeping of animals and growing of trees on the same piece of land so that all the benefits can be realized and thank you for reasoning to me and i hope you have learned thank you